Hi there guys, Sai here and welcome back. My has it been quite a long time. I'm sorry about that and I'm sorry this has taken so long. This is the signal strength tuner, not quite the version that was in the automatic um, aimable TNT turret. Well it wasn't automatic was it not? Nope. Anyway, it's not quite that version because there were some flaws in that version. This is slightly more compact and more fully featured and it doesn't suffer from the same problems. Luckily. So, if we go through the details, it has, we bring our crosshairs up, four functions. Increase signal strength, which does not appear to be working. Ah yes it is. Currently I've got it tuned to have a maximum signal strength of 12 due to these hoppers, though we can increase this to 15 and as we can see the signal strength has increased to 15 sorry what about that you can decrease the signal strength reset it and set it and it's fairly simple to build i don't really know that there's a whole lot else to say about this, so I guess onwards with the tutorial. So, to start with, the first thing you want to build is the memory cell for the signal strength, and we do this by creating a sort of Tetris zigzag shape here, putting blocks up in both corners, and I'm using yellow here because these are going to be movable. We'll put a comparator pointing in towards each of these, and redstone behind them. And now we see if we put a signal in here, it is saved, and we can get rid of it by removing either of these corner blocks. And we can just put a sticky piston above each of them, facing down, so that firing the sticky piston cuts the circuit. Et voila! Now, the next part we need to make is the in, oh sorry, the decrease circuit, and we do this by providing a slight decay on the signal. And that happens here, two comparators, and a redstone. So we can see that if we now remove this, the signal has to take a slightly longer route round and decays one. You can do this with only two ticks, whereas this will be three ticks per signal strength decay, but it sometimes syncs up with the memory cells two ticks and you can get a bit of a flashing going on which was a problem with the previous design that was used in the canon. Anyway, on to the next part. We need to be able to increase the signal strength so you build out two blocks like this, come around here and put a movable block here again with a piston above it. Oh, don't set any of those comparators to, to subtract yet. Now you do have two comparators on subtract, one here and one here, both facing into blocks. Redstone running into the side of each of them and a hopper behind. This is the maximum signal strength, so you can use a redstone block here if you just want signal strength 15 or any other input. Uh, obviously they don't have to be hoppers, you can put the signal in however you like. But I'm just going to put, say, four stacks in and that gives us a maximum output of 12. And do the same here, make sure to have these on exactly the same contents, or at least contents that give out the same level. The only thing net left now is to put the inputs in, but before that I'll explain why this increase works. So we can see that the output of the memory cell is coming through here, through this block, and it's being inverted here, and then the inverse is decaying by one. So if you're reducing the inverse by one, you're increasing the normal signal by one, and then we invert the reduced inverse again, which is quite a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> anyway, for the inputs we just want to switch out a couple of bits in the inventory there we go we have one input here which is the reset um, oops another input here which is inverted with a torch and that allows us to increase two ticks on a repeater 
add an input here. Don't worry about the crossed wire here. You shouldn't be increasing and decreasing at the same time anyway, so it won't matter. And then the final input is at the bottom here, which is the set signal. And if we just reset it for a moment, there we go, and set. You can also put any signal strength you want facing into a comparator into here, so we could power it like so, with the specific signal strength coming through here, if you want set to go to a different value than full, which is important if you don't want the signal going any higher than, say, 9 or 10. Just remember that if you have your signal inside the memory cell already at, say, 12, and you try and set to 9, it won't work. You have to reset first. Uh, then the final thing is the output, which I tend to take from here. Though you could just take that as the first point of your output. You can also take an output from these two if you particularly want to. I'd suggest not, though, because of the proximity of the piston. Anyway, thank you for watching. Have a nice day. I hope you have found this useful. The schematics and world download in the doo doo as always. And yeah, thanks again for watching. Goodbye.